Aloha. Welcome to Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of people, topics, events, and organizations doing great in our world. You know, we are right in the middle of this COVID and it's it's a, it's a stressful time. So, you know, we have a really special guest today because um, she's going to help us out. We're, we're, how do we deal with all the stress, uncertainty, and staying calm, which is a major concern for, for everybody? How do we achieve balance in this? And so today we have uh, our guest, Lisa Dunlop. She's a, a nurse practitioner with an integrative health background, and she's going to speak from her own personal journey and experience on the front lines of the pandemic and how she's using that now to empower people, um, especially those in healthcare, um, with self compassion tools and to achieve resiliency amidst these difficult times. Um, she offers a variety of online workshops and weekly groups and toolkits. And so we are just going to learn more about how to be compassionate with ourselves, which is, of course, leads to compassion for others. So thank you so much for joining me today and being a guest on the show, Lisa. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's well, it's, it's, you know, we are right in the middle of this COVID and it's sort of just turned everything on its head. And I think life was stressful enough before COVID. How do we do it all? Or can we do it all? Or when do we, yeah, you know, how, how, how is it manageable? Um, I don't know if I have the exact answer for how can we do it all, but I know for myself how I am learning to do it all is to purely accept what is and surrender to what is in the present. And I'm finding that when we can be here and not in what was and what's coming or what we don't know is coming, we really have a lot of joy to find in the present moment. Um, I, I yesterday was out paddling us up in the ocean and there was a sea kelp forest I was headed towards and I felt anxiety about being in the open ocean by myself and out at deception pass here in washington and all of a sudden you know i see this seal pop up and seconds later i see a jellyfish huge you know and i thought this is so funny it's like i'm worrying about what i'm gonna see in the kelp forest and if i don't pay attention i'm gonna miss what's in the kelp forest so your your message was at that time to yourself just be here now, be present with this seal popping up and this jellyfish rather than you let you acknowledge the fear, but then moved on to the present. Yeah, yeah. So it's like for me through the pandemic and some like health issues I've had in the last eight months that have now looking back looked like burnout and um, compassion fatigue. It's like in those moments where um, I was told that I was having different struggles with my health and potentially uh, ovarian cancer back when King County was shutting down and everything was getting lights out in March, um, it was kind of this tunnel vision moment for myself where it was like, okay, I can go down the road of fear and anxiety and certainly did that too. Went down that road and had created head to toe metastasis in my mind. And, um, and then it really became quickly clear to me that if I just enjoyed the present moment and the joy of my children's laughter and the joy of my garden and my bare feet in the grass, um, that I could actually enjoy my life you know, and I can't control what's going on out there, the, the pandemic. I can't control what's even going on in my body. I can't control what's going on at work. We're out of PPE at that time. And, um, but what I do have the power of is just to connect to my mind and body and really calm down that fight or flight and use those tools that work for me um, while I waited through the pandemic to get surgery and such. And, and, and so you, you practice these, the, the self-compassion uh, at that time and came up with this, I got to live right in the moment. And of course, the moment is all we ever have. And, uh, you know, I know like Louise A says that in her nighttime meditations, she says, whether you had the best day or the worst day, it is over. So let it go. And I always think that's so, she says, this is the only moment you have. And I, I realize that I think most of us live either in the past or in the future, not a lot right now because it's, there's so much going on. And if you're a healthcare worker, can you talk a little bit about that experience? Because for, 
the masses that, that are just out there trying to figure out how do I how do I go to Safeway, you know, without freaking out and and, and all of that. But you were a healthcare worker right on the front lines and having to dress up like um, like you were visiting the surface of Mars, basically, and, and dealing with that whole population. How did that, obviously it leads to burnout and your one of your focuses is the healthcare community. Can you talk to a little bit about that and how this especially is vital for healthcare uh, workers and, and the self-compassion connections that you started? Yeah, so for me, working during the pandemic was on and off because I was having health issues. And when it, I was on the front lines at first, I was out in the community here in King County and we had some of the first cases in the country um, in my area. And so it was, we had no PPE. So we just had to, you know, buckle up the bootstraps, get out there in the community, go in these nursing homes. Nobody was testing. Nobody knew what was out there yet. No one had protocols. Um, and there was, it was just putting out fires. There was no coping tools. There was no, let's sit down and talk about this. And, uh, so yeah, I was, I was definitely spinning in some fear and anxiety. And, and meanwhile, I'm dealing with some pain going on in my body and potential scary diagnoses. And so, um, for me, it really kind of brought this tunnel vision of like, um, what can I do to kind of get healthy of my mind, body, and spirit and be able to, um, attend to my patients, attend to myself, attend to my family. Um, and, I quickly realized that there's just not a lot of support out there because everyone's putting out fires. And so the healthcare community is so vulnerable right now um, because even something like putting on, on PPE can cause anxiety and trigger stress and trauma. And then this global trauma that everyone has kind of triggers little traumas inside of us. And in healthcare, we're pretty much taught not to, you know, take time to feel, not to take time to honor mistakes and practice self-compassion and self-acceptance. It's kind of like your mistakes are put up on the wall because, you know, you could potentially harm someone. Uh, so it just, it clicked for me, which was like, as I went through my own healing journey and uh, was able to make my, you know, ovarian mass completely disappear just by using, um, you know, meditation and yoga and breathing and self-compassion practice and uh, sensory practice. And this was over a three month period of just manifesting and envisioning um, the healing. Uh, and then when I went back to work, it was just clear as day. Like if I can learn to heal myself with different tools and I've kind of been through this burnout and anxiety and trauma there's a lot of other healthcare professionals out there that potentially have burnout or trauma or body manifestations of stress. And how can I share my journey to help them? And that's kind of how it began. I held this workshop and 50 people showed up in the community and it was with two other small business women, alternative healers, and people were just hungry for the concepts of healing yourself first and giving yourself compassion so that you can then extend it to others and start to problem solve. And that's, that's how it was born. And, and so it's born from your own journey and just, especially this year and things just became really clear to you about um, that. In fact, out of those 50 people, would you say were the majority of healthcare workers or related to the healthcare industry? No, no, not that initial workshop. So that was about, two months, three months ago that I held that online. And uh, that was like family, friends, friends of friends, um, some strangers, and not necessarily at that time, you know, and I'm still, the business is still um, offered the workshops, the groups um, to all community members. And then I've kind of launched this healthcare program um, second to that. Um, it was just in the background of my mind that the healthcare workers were the most vulnerable right now. And um, they're just going to need so much support, not just today, but for the years to come. And in that workshop, it was uh, just anyone in the community that's struggling with hopelessness and helplessness and feeling, um, you know, anxiety about what's unknown. And I think it's the idea of having tools and empowered, it empowers you to then say, okay, I can control something. I can control what's in my heart and in my mind. And then through that possibility starts to happen and energy starts to expand. And uh, just so folks at home can uh, get on and see uh, maybe some more information about 
uh, your group. You're on Facebook and Instagram also, and the website is coming. And we have to all realize that this is a you know, a new experience coming out, being born uh, of your your knowledge and experience, which is terrific. So, how what is your Facebook uh, page and uh, what's your Instagram page? Yeah, so it, they're both called Self Compassion Connections and. The idea, when the idea sprouted, it was also part of self-compassion work is connecting to other humans and feeling that common shared experience. Dr. Kristen Neff talks a lot about that. Um, Pema Chodron has talked about that. And, and just that you're not alone in this feeling. And once you kind of hear other stories and share other stories, um, I just got that sense that connecting to other humans, even if it's on Zoom right now, is so powerful. So that was the title. And um, that's how you can find me on Facebook. And then there's um, community groups and a healthcare group. And those are free on Facebook. And they're just um, inspirations, motivations, a place to share, um, be accountable for your journey and self-compassion and mindfulness. And then there's also a drop-in weekly group for healthcare professionals that's live on Zoom that's starting to take some shape and form. We just started it a few weeks ago and it's really powerful to hear what other healthcare workers are doing across the country. And it just gives you this sense of like, again, I'm not alone in this and we're all kind of in this together. Um, and then the workshops are also online via Zoom and they are um, listed on the Facebook page and the Instagram page. And that's and it's uh, again facebook.com uh, slash self compassion connections. Yeah, thank you for yes, yes, exactly. Uh, no, it's and uh, because you know people can or they could probably uh, Google uh, your name Lisa Dunlap D U N L A P and they would find that as well. And you look like you on your Facebook page. You're not a, a panda or a dog uh, or anything. You're, you're just you. So. Um, now you you have a connection with the healthcare community in Hawaii and and the work that you've done uh, as a nurse practitioner. What was your what would have been your specialties in that, and how has that informed what you're doing now? Yeah, so when I was born and raised in Seattle, and that's where I am now. And when I moved to Hawaii, the intention was to become a nurse, and that was um, in 2006. And I went through a program, and this was after years of having. Um, you know, I was in, born and raised in the Northwest. So I had, you know, herbal medicine training here in Seattle. I'd had mindfulness trainings. Um, you know, I had hoped to go to Bastyr, but at that time, it just wasn't a real legitimate career 20 years ago, if you weren't coming from a wealthy family. Um, and so it's like, okay, nursing can offer something that's, um, I can actually touch on the integrative realm if I have this Western background. So I went to Hawaii and it was the perfect place to integrate the two because of all the cultures and all the different um, native medicine and such, and the, just the belief in the like healing of the land. And uh, while I was there, I worked in the community for Hospice Hawaii for many years doing um, house calls. And then I got my master's in my primary care adult geriatric nurse practitioner. And I spent a lot of time working with the geriatric population. Um, I worked at Queens Hospital as a holistic nurse, and that was really wonderful. I got trained in reflexology, um, clinical aromatherapy, and healing touch, and was able to practice um, integrative therapies in a Western setting. And it was fantastic seeing the results and um, that patients had, and you know the love for that. And then I worked in the community as a for the geriatric house calls team at Queens Medical Center, and so I got an, another understanding of um, just being out in the community and what people really want and what they need um, and for healing, which is spending more time with them, really listening, um, really talking story. And that was really wonderful training for me. Yeah, I can, I can imagine it, it was. And you mentioned that Hawaii was a great place for that and, and a natural place for that. But you mentioned Bastyr University, which is uh, you know famous for its naturopathic uh, program and, and holistic um, uh wellness uh, coursework what is what does that mean and and now that you're back there are you finding that it's just different back there or are people receptive in different ways to that idea and what does natural uh, or holistic mean for you now that that you're back there or has it changed at all oh it's changed tons uh, seattle is like light years ahead of my experience in hawaii as far as like having um 
naturopaths on our insurance plans all around. So like I could pick any naturopath here as my primary care and naturopaths are definitely rising up into the same pay scale and, you know, are getting much more respect in this community. Um, so I feel like in Hawaii, more than native medicine is in my opinion, it doesn't mean I'm correct, is more um, honored and respected, but I don't, I didn't feel like the natural paths were being honored and recognized as well as they are here. Um, and so what it means for me is that it's beautiful because people really know what it means. And so when you talk about alternative things and energy healing and mindfulness and diet and such that it's actually uh, kind of mainstream here. And so it's, it's easy to integrate the two. Now I had always envisioned a brick and mortar, like integrative clinic for myself. And this business is just not exactly what I envisioned 15 years ago, but it's so beautiful how it's turning out to be integrative as I line up with other small business healers and connect with other women to hold workshops and be able to offer things that are integrative for people. That's, yeah, that's right, because you, the, the, the insurance forces, uh, well, it, it, it requires that uh, natural, natural health care practitioners or uh, uh, even acupuncturists, if they're licensed by the state, I believe they're required to be covered in, in, in Washington, which is very advanced now. Of course, we, you know, the, the native, uh, you know, Hawaiian traditions here are also very important and very relevant for, for Hawaii and how we relate to things. They're not mutually exclusive. I think they're grounded in the same ideas a lot of the times. So maybe it brings more of a spiritual perspective um, uh, here in Hawaii. That's that's also really needed. And are you seeing that as well with um, with the natural back in, in in Washington that there's that people are hungry for a spiritual component as well as sort of this more natural approach uh, to to medicine? Yes, and that's exactly what happened for me. It was like uh, Western medicine was failing me, and you know in my search for causes for pain and, um, and then, you know, telling me I have cancer when in fact I didn't. And, and then telling me, you know, just sit it out, wait it out three months, you know, everything's shut and don't come to the ERs. Don't come here, even though you're in a lot of pain and wait for your surgery. And it's like, wait a second, that's not enough. You know, there's gotta be more. And it's amazing. The people I've met, the different kinds of healers I've met through my own journey and how, um, spirituality plays such a big part into healing. Um, you know, when it comes to stored emotions and stored trauma, and I feel like people, um, are more understanding of that and more open to that, especially in this pandemic, being able to say, okay, I got to find something beyond, you know, Western medicine, beyond the tools I've used before. How can I actually integrate everything and understand that, you know, this is an opportunity for us to, sort of step into new territory and find other ways to thrive and enjoy our lives and be whole. Uh, it, it, it's interesting. You mentioned that, like the, the tools, because it is different tools from different traditions, different learning perspectives. And, and uh, certainly, you know, each, uh, each culture has its own very deep wisdom. Uh, ancient, you know, ancient, and now we have, we have a Western, medical perspective wisdom, which is great if you, if you, um, you know, break your arm, it's great to go to the ER and get it set in a plaster cast, um, certainly. Um, but for other things that may be ail they're ailing us uh, more, uh, whether it is mental, emotional, um, spiritual based illnesses that, that do manifest because of stress, they say stress is that, is that, you know, uh, a killer or uh, just even things just about sitting down all day. When you're looking, stepping back and looking at things in a total picture, you're allowed to um, to pick and choose what works for you, what's best, and and you have developed a toolkit that is in, including parts of these things, and I'm sure that that is growing uh, over time, and will and will and will have a lot of different modules inside of it as you develop your um, your offerings. So, what what is your self compassion toolkit uh, that you? that you have developed right now. And I'm looking forward to seeing how, how it expands over time. Yeah, so I mean, I think on a like theoretical level, there's tools in the workshop that are very helpful for what we're talking about to practice self-compassion and mindfulness. And I can certainly share some like a t uh, one of those. And I have this tangible kit that I created while I was just 
sitting with pain and surrendering to waiting, um, you know, for my surgery, which a lot of people around the country had to do, right? A lot of people that weren't with COVID had to actually sit in the wings and let their, put their health aside and wait till things reopen. And so I just kind of really tapped into what can I do in these moments to feel joy and also share that with others. And so this toolkit is a reminder of things that you would learn in the workshops. And so it includes a, um, a heart chakra stone, which is really wonderful. It's um, rose quartz. And it is something that you can use for self-acceptance. You can put it in your pocket. A lot of healers do that. I always did that as just a way to reground using touch. Um, you can put it on your heart. It has a little vial of frankincense oil, which is a spiritual grounding oil. Um, and it's really wonderful for also tapping into self-acceptance and that spirituality. It has, I uh, teamed up with another local business here in Seattle and she makes handmade organic um, heart-shaped lotion bars. And so that's in there too. And that's for the idea of self-touch and it sounds a little odd, but it's really wonderful when you're dealing with a pandemic to give yourself a foot rub or honor that sense of touch um, that you need. And then it has this art card that I created um, and it, it reminds you with a question, how can I nourish myself with kindness in this moment? Because that's really what self-compassion is all about. And that's what I was gifted with um, my health issues. I was given the time to really ask myself for the first time in my life, how can I nourish myself in this moment right now? Not something like I'm going to yoga or I'm going to massage, but like, okay, I need to just put my bare feet in the grass today, right now, or touch a tree. Um, or go outside and look at my garden um, or meditate. And so, and then on the back, it has tips like put your hand on your heart, breathe, awaken your senses and surrender. And so- Put your hand on your heart, breathe, mm -hmm. awaken your senses and what's the last one? Surrender. Surrender. <laughs> surrender to right now. Yeah. So to what is, because a lot of our difficulties in life, emotions, thoughts are our inability to accept what is. Um, and the idea of just surrendering, even if it's hard, even if it sucks, even if you just, all the it come up, comes up, even if you're in pain, if you're just in it and you're really in it, um, it's amazing that you can still feel pretty good in those moments. And so, those were some of my powerful tools that have helped me heal. And I don't think I got to say, but by the time they went in for surgery to remove the grapefruit mass in my ovary, it was completely gone. Um, and it was pretty much a medical miracle because it wasn't the kind that just disappears in eight weeks. And the doctors were jaws dropped out of the OR like, what happened? And how could this be? And they had to call in other you know, people for opinion after opinion to look at my old scans. And, you know, I said, I know how it happened. I was practicing um, manifestation and I was practicing meditation and I was de-stressing and just being in the present moment. I had a, like a community also like sending energy and vis visualizations. And it was like, wow, if I could do this, anyone can do this. And why not? And why not be able to, um, heal ourselves. Well, and, and obviously, you know, she's a healer in a different way and her way is, is you know, primarily through the blade and that's, it's a different way of, of dealing with things and it's, it's a valid way. And I think probably in a case like yours where it comes up and she's, how does this happen? It certainly has to open their minds and anybody, I mean, sometimes you'll see, uh, you know, healthcare providers or they might be uh, doctors and they, they think, oh, I would never go to a chiropractor or an acupuncturist until they have terrible back pain or something. Then they go and then suddenly <laughs> it works. So, ironic you said that. And I, I'm glad you said that because uh, absolutely, I still have my white coat and I'm still, Western medicine is so beautiful and valid for so many things. And even right. that doctor, I love her. And by the next time I followed up with her, she was opening her mind a little bit more to that because she's yeah. still like, I can't imagine what happened. There was no, it, there's no signs of it bursting or anything. And she then, by the third visit, I saw her about three weeks ago. She said, I really want to sign up for one of your workshops because I'm feeling, you know, the strain of this pandemic. And I thought, you know, that's a win. It's like, 
everybody comes to a point when they're ready on their own journey. And um, I agree with you. I'm grateful for her. I'm grateful for the surgery, even though there was nothing there for them to remove, but I had more learning and healing to do. And as, as do we all, and it, it's not an either, or it's a both. And, and that the, the, we don't get to stop learning just because we turn 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and into the next life. Um, I, so it's, it's a, it's all about awakening. I, I mean, I'm viewing COVID as hard as it is as a gift. It's a gift of, of looking inward, of looking outward, of looking at our at our society, our relationships, our relationship with ourself. Um, you mentioned putting your hand on your heart. What does that mean to you? Um, and why, why, why did that pop up as one of your four skills? What does putting your hand on your heart mean to you? So to me, this is like the, the epitome of self-compassion work. It's like really reconnecting with yourself and honoring what it is you're experiencing in this moment and then allowing yourself to um, be with that and offer yourself words of kindness and a sense of we're all in this together. And it's something you can do anywhere, anytime. And you don't even have to say or think anything, honestly. <laughs> you can just do it. Just, just, just doing this, it just, it's kind of a grounding yourself. And I love the idea that you had in your kit of massage because we are touch deprived. Even, you know, here in Hawaii where we might give each other a kiss on the cheek or a hug and we're a hug, Americans are a huggy people just in general, but we've been, we haven't had that. So it's good to, to do that. And I love the idea of the rose quartz, whether people believe that it has a special healing frequency or not, doesn't really matter. Just having that in your pocket as a reminder that says, what am I doing right now that can nourish myself in this moment or a touchstone to just have you calm down? You know, the, I love that you're offering this. I love that this is born from your authentic experiences that you've, that you've gone through very recently and in during this COVID pandemic and that you're able to ship this over and offer this to people with this very rich background that you bring uh, from your uh your, your work history of the, uh, you know, last a, a couple of decades. And it, it's just such important work. And I look forward to doing that. And I encourage people go to your website, uh, or sorry, to the, the Facebook page right now. Uh, and we'll say it again. It's uh, facebook.com slash self-compassion connections, or look up uh, Lisa Dunlap. And yeah, you and you can find the kits. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, and you can find the kits there too. Yeah, you can find the kits there and upcoming workshops that I'm doing in September and October and um, trying to bring the workshops into healthcare organizations themselves. But I also have them out in the community that you can sign up for privately. Okay, and I hope that we can uh, come back and see how everything is looking in six months in a year and see what new things you've, you've, uh, you've brought to the fore. But in the, in the, in the meantime, unfortunately, we are out of time and it's, uh, you know, it's, we always have so much more to discuss, but I so appreciate you for being on, on the show and sharing your journey and your gifts um, with all of us. And I look forward to, to all that this uh, is going to, all the good that this is going to come from this. So thank you so much, Lisa. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. This was wonderful. Okay, I look forward to seeing you later then. Aloha. Aloha.